I'm Barb Nish, and I'd like to welcome you to my home in Mountain View, Alberta, Canada. And with me today are very special people, my mother, Monty Nielsen, and my dad, Harold Nielsen. You can say hi to the camera. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> They'll love it. Uh, the reason we're out here today is because my mom and my dad, for the last, what, mom, 25 years? Oh, yeah. About 25 years have taken up a quest for collecting nativities and we just really felt like it would be an important thing and something the community would enjoy coming out here with us listening to mom and dad and uh, seeing their nativities so we're going to talk with them a little bit just visit and let you get to know them and get to hear what they have to say so we're going to go way way back back to the very beginning I uh, think I could safely say that they didn't really get started seriously until their kids were all gone, of which they're the parents of seven girls, 29 grandchildren, and I think we've lost track of the great-grandchildren. Yeah, 28. 28 great-grandchildren. So and they're three greats. Three great-greats. Great-greats. So they're, they're doing <laughs> quite well. So, Mom, <laughs> let's, uh, let's have you tell us first what you remember about what got you going on collecting nativities and dad you can jump in anytime you want <laughs> well I, I think it was uh, when our girls were in primary uh, the one year probably Paula's last year she's our youngest and the primary had a cardboard nativity that they uh, gave each one of the kids in primary that year. And I think that's kind of what started it, because we had this cardboard nativity that the girls brought out every Christmas, and they sit it under the tree. And uh, it's long since worn out. <laughs> so I think that was really when we first started. And <coughs> After that, it just seemed like <laughs> wherever we went, it didn't matter where, a nativity would jump out at me. <laughs> and I would, I would think I had to have it. So it just gradually evolved into a collection of nativities from wherever we would go or anywhere. So, Dad, yeah. do you do you remember when you got on board with it, Dad? Were you a little resistant to start with as you saw these nativities enter the house and take up your space? <laughs> no, when that happened, I got on, I got on the running board and went with her. <laughs> oh, she, he and he did. Like it's been really, really fun to go shopping with Mom and Dad, no matter where we've gone, whether we've been in Utah or or just different places that we've gone, and to have. Dad be the one to say, Barb's come and look at this, and, and he would have found a nativity that Mom, he knew Mom would like, and we'd try and buy it secretly and hope that we could convince the store that not to let Mother see it and bring it home and, and give, it, give it to Mom as a surprise from Dad, and that was really fun. And, and it's been really, really interesting to watch the nativities take over the house, literally take over the house, uh, because it's like Mom says, as... As they got this interest in the nativities, everywhere they went, their eyes were drawn to anything that had to do with the nativities. And uh, I think the really great, great thing that it's been for mom and dad is to bring the light of Christ and the true meaning of Christmas truly into our home at Christmas time. And I know Mom was talking about that the other night at our family home evening, and and uh, that was more or less what you said, wasn't it, Mom? Yes. And and it has made a huge difference, and she's had a lot of people come to the house to look at the nativities and and to to enjoy them. One of the things that my dad has sat here and watched my mom do for a number of years, because they're not big TV people, uh, is to do her cross stitching, right, Dad? Yes. And uh, I was going to say about these nativity. Didn't matter what time of year it was. First thing you did when you went in the store, you went. You was looking for a nativity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, and would you say most people say to you, "How could you possibly collect that many nativities?" 
at last count we had over 1,500. I'm, I'm sure we're low now, but that's a lot of nativities. And, and people say, they're all the same. What is there to collect with all those many nativities? But tell them a little bit, Mom and Dad. Tell our audience about how, how they speak to you, how they are different, how they mean. Each one means has, is for a different reason. Well, they just are. <laughs> it's, <clears throat> if, you know, we'd see one and, and all of a sudden, oh, that would just look really nice on our coffee table or on our sofa table or whatever. And uh, Each one has a facial different appearance. They're all the same, but they're different. They're just like people. We're all people. We're all physically the same, but yet we're different, and that's the way the nativities are. And uh, they just, yeah, some of them just, just make your heart just go like this. And others, well, yeah, I really like that one, but I have to think about it. <laughs> so it, yeah, it, it's just a, I don't know, just something that's just really, really grasped me. And. Carol's been so good to, to just let me do it. <laughs> it's hard to say you can buy one and get the full picture. <clears throat> Takes them all to get the full picture to me, yeah. Because they're all so different. And I did, I do love doing Canada Cross Stitch. In fact, the first nativity I had, well, have is a Canada Cross Stitch nativity. It's a little one over here, just a little one. It's and one that's uh, about three by four, and it says Jesus is the reason, mm -hmm. right? And all it has on it is the Jesus part. And and now, if you when you see the pictures that Corey has taken of some of the rest of her cross stitches, she's gone from the three by four to eight by tens, twelve yeah. by twelves, uh, whole tablecloths tree skirts, just unreal amounts of uh, cross-stitching. Yeah. And, I, Mother, you got to tell us about this one here that's on the table right in front of us. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's got just the three kings on it, on all four sides, and they're yes. absolutely gorgeous. It's, yes, it is. This is the wise men one, and these are the gifts that they are bringing to the Christ child. And if you want to look at the gifts, they're very, very unique nativities. And these little tiny ones, they wind up. And then when you push it back through, it goes around. And the little nativity is musical. That one and this one does the same thing. Uh, so these are, yes, gifts that the wise men are bringing. This one says, the first gift of Christmas. And it's a special one. I like it. These little gloves are for the children to play with, tell the story with. So <laughs> it's just hard. Just they just jump out at us. <laughs> this is one of the first ones that we got, and the little cradle rocks back and forth as it plays. So that's a special one, and the little dove up there. <laughs> The other thing that catches Mother's eye when she's shopping, and Dad as well, is any clothes that would have the nativity on it all. And she's got shirts and dresses and jackets, and they have the nativity on, and she wears them all through the Christmas season, and it's it's been really a labor of love, hasn't it, Mom and Dad? Yes. It has been. They love it. They usually start the 1st of September to put up their nativities, 
And, you know, without being unkind, I would have to say that it's taken longer each year. Right. And that would be because they're getting slower. <laughs> what can I say? They're, they're slowing down. And um, it's, you cannot imagine what that is like to take everything down off the wall in every room of the house, to put that all away, to get everything up, to put on every wall and every couch and every table. Every window. Every window. <laughs> they have to go out to the barn. They keep them out at the barn. They keep them in the little shed, under all the beds, yeah. under a any cupboard, any place they can find a spot. There will be a nativity hidden. It would be certainly a treat for anybody who decided to come looking at what you had, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we have several outdoor scenes, but we didn't get them up this year before the snow came. So that's kind of a disappointment. Yes, but it, it's so windy here and the snow drifts around and drifts over the... Yes. Drifts and blows them away and so you get kind of discouraged putting them up, you know. Well. But, but they're beautiful and they're fun to have up too. Yeah, they're really fun oh, to yeah. have up. Yeah. Another year, Dad. Well, um, I want you guys to talk, tell us about your favorite one, your favorite nativity, and if you remember why. Well, that's difficult. There. I know, I know they're all your favorites, that's Mom. That's difficult. I already said this is one of my favorites. First ones that we got was this little one. Because it would rock? Yes. So the, the one that I have always loved, and it is one of the first ones you ever got, and that's the one that's on the cabinet over there. Oh, the and village. the reason why I have loved <clears throat> that one I think is because it just to me looks like it could have been sat right down in the Israel area. I think it just looks there. It's got the whole village, the lights. I just think the figures look really real. The other one that the cross stitches are my favorites. I, there is not one cross stitch I, I don't love. I just love them and maybe that's because I love to cross stitch too. The other one that I really really like is the one that actually has my name on because the one that I had got broken and mom was nice enough to put my name on the one that she has and it's a hanging one and it hangs in a curve and is a wind chime so the stables up here and then all the pieces curve around like this and they're glass and it's just it's just cute and unique and beautiful and I think anybody who came through would say that's my favorite that's my favorite that's my favorite because as you look at each one of them they're unique in one way or another and I know when my friend Marcia Jensen came out one day and looked at the nativities, I don't know if you remember or not, Mom, but the one she loved is the animal one. Oh. She loves the animal one yes. out there and the, yes. the kitty one, and I don't know if she looked real close at the snowman nativities either, but they're really cute no, as well. She hasn't but she. Um, they, she picked those out right off the bat as her favorites, mm -hmm. number one, because she loves dogs, right? She loves animals. Mm -hmm. But each one is so unique in its own way that they're our favorites. They're just all our favorites. But I know you have a favorite. So, Dad, what's your favorite? Anyone. Anyone with a village. Because it reminds me of, of what uh, Israel would look like, or Bethlehem at that time. Just kind of a stable with some animals and I'm, I'm like Barb's. I like this one up here too, but I like the other one out there. And I like the, I get a kick out of the animals and the expressions on their face. They think they're pretty, think they're pretty smart. The rooster up on top is going to crow about it all day, I guess. And the dogs with their angel wings and oh, the cow and the horse, any of them, even the bears. Imagine a bear being an angel sitting up there looking down. At, I guess they're my favorite, but the others are, the others are just as good and just as nice. So that's the ones I like, I guess. They're they are beautiful. They are just beautiful. So, Mom, you have a favorite? Well, it's it's really hard to choose. They're all <laughs> favorite, and each one just has a different personality. But I do have the one out in the kitchen and it's a little nativity and there's the little donkey and he's laying spread eagled on the floor in front of, of Mary and the babe 
<clears throat> and uh, to me, to me, he's saying, oh, I made it. I got her here in time. Because <laughs> he just looks like he just collapsed. That really touches me. And that one is so cute. Yeah. So cute. It's, and it's one of the smaller ones. And you it wouldn't necessarily think one. that the smaller ones would have mm -hmm. as much character and stuff, but they do. They have every bit as much character. She has, Mom and Dad have nativities that their kids have painted, their kids have ceramic for them. They have, in fact, it's become something that the whole family has just got right into as far as giving the nativities. One year, my dad and mom did the neatest thing for all of us, for them and all of us. My dad wouldn't claim to be a woodworker, would you, Dad? No. But they found this really neat pattern in a book, and they made each of us the Christmas box. And on the outside of the Christmas box is right the, the figures the <laughs> of the nativity. And actually, I think it was about the year the book came out the, by Richard Evans, the Christmas box, oh, about yeah. that same time. And so that always became associated with that for me. And inside the Christmas box, we keep some of our most, most special Christmas things. So, Mom, can you tell us what you keep in your Christmas box? Do you have... Well, and, and it's okay, you can well, just sit there, Mom. Okay. You don't need to move. Um, all of the decorations on the tree, they're all nativity-related. And they stay in the Christmas box. That's what's stored in the Christmas box from year to year. And then the box sits there on the floor by the tree. And... Uh, I, we just know that's where the decorations go for this tree, and they're all nativity-related, every one of them. Now let's talk a little bit about the decorations on the tree, Mom, because I, what's really interesting about it is not only are a lot of them very, very old, but they go back to many of them are also ones that you guys made, for your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and now your great-greats. A number of years ago, probably, well, Callie was just a baby when you guys decided that that was what you were going to do for your kids for Christmas every year, was give them a nativity. A nativity, most of them are small enough to go on the tree. Some of them were a little bit bigger, like in a puzzle-type shape that would sit. Uh, and that's what's basically on the tree. Almost everything you see there on the tree would be something that every one of Mom and Dad's kids and grandkids have been given that they have made as their special Christmas present. So all the kids now, when they leave home, have that many nativities to put on a tree or to display somewhere in their home. Is that not right, Mom and Dad? Yes. And that's been a lot of work, too, making that many nativities every year. It has been, but something that we love and, and hope that it will be a cherished family tradition. And well, I yeah. think it is because I think they all put them up somewhere at some time. I know a couple of weeks ago when we were having our family home evening, uh, several of the kids talked to you about how precious those nativities are to them and how yeah. they each either have a tree that they put them on or they have a room they display them in. And I think that's a real tribute to you guys to show that they do all have a love of the nativities. I know Felisa's little girl, Alana, who's just <laughs> barely turned three, since that little girl has been old enough to, to recognize things in people's houses, has come out here and has had to go around to every nativity and touch the baby D Jesus. That's all she was interested in was... To come Jesus. in here and just touch the baby Jesuses, and we could follow that little girl around as she went from nativity to nativity, which really, in her memory, is really only for two years, because she's just barely three. And she can do that. She did that the other night. Came in here, that's all she was interested in, just barely touched those little nativities. And I know that Felice has several nativities in her home that she's mm -hmm. teaching her with, so... I think it's an amazing thing what it does to, to for a whole family. Uh, the other thing that you have a lot of, Mom, with your nativities uh, is your Christmas books, your Christmas oh. nativity books. And I think they're all downstairs somewhere, 
But that's the other thing that's been really fun to do, like is to look them. for your nativity books, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, you definitely have some of those that are your favorites as well, that you get out every year and oh, yes. reread and, and look at and let the kids look at, the pop-up books and the... Yeah, there's a lot of... They're downstairs oh, yes. in, a, in a box. Tell us a little bit over the years about some of the people that have come and looked at your nativities and what they've thought. Hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, Dad, do you remember? Well, some, some are really interested in them and some, we're all different. Everybody doesn't like nativities, I guess. Some it's, people can come in and just walk around and only take a few minutes, you know, and they're ready to go. Other people take time and they're all interested, something like that great-granddaughter of ours and just barely touch him, you know. She touched him just so reverently, just like, you know, so. Yes, it's been very interesting because we've had a lot of uh, youth classes, primary children and young men and young women. They brought their, their groups to come and visit. And yes, some of them would just come in and basically walk through the house and well, let's go now. <laughs> and others would would just really be interested. They just stopped and they looked and they studied everything. They just took the time to really enjoy it. And it made them, we, we just would really look forward to the youth coming and, and looking at the nativities. And, uh, and I could hear them chattering. Oh, I love that one. Isn't that cute? I wish that was mine. <laughs> Things like that. And uh, and some of them went, oh, I'm going to do this when I get big. <laughs> anyway, it makes it really special and worthwhile. It's been a good thing yeah, for a lot of people. <clears throat> I've talked to quite a few people, Mom and Dad, who have, have come out and looked at your nativities. One of the ones several of my favorites who have come out. Paul Browdy brought yes. his wife Deb and yes. uh, Letcha and Matt and their two grandchildren. Yes. And that was after years and years of Paul doing the framing for <laughs> your pictures and hearing me talk about that this was an absolutely unreal sight to see. And Letcha, his daughter, is also very into cross-stitching and into the framing and had helped Paul several times decide on some of those framing things. I don't know if you realize that yes. or not, but she did. Yes, and and Lecha was just extremely interested to come and bring her kids. And Paul, in fact, said to me just today before I came out, I ran into him and, and he said, oh, we need to go out there again. And he said, you know, that was the most amazing thing. We thought we were going to go out there and spend 15 minutes, go back home, and, you know, that'd be fine. We saw Monty's nativities. We can get that off our list, right, and be done with that. And uh, he said, and I don't know, two hours later or two and a half hours later, refreshments, hot chocolate, not sure if you remembered the whipped cream or not, hot chocolate, and lo and behold, they left with a gift, which, of course, was a nativity for each of them when they left. And that's the other thing that Mom and Dad have done with everybody that has come is they have always had a light refreshment of some kind, and they have all left. It didn't matter if there were 15 in the group that came. They all left with a small nativity, usually like the ones that Mom and Dad had made for their kids or their grandkids at Christmas. And if nothing else, what that did was start them on their path of being able to collect nativities, and I think that that's something that Mom and Dad kind of have liked to see people you know, pick up on something that and yes. decide to do that. Priscilla Hatch and her group of women that came out that one time, yeah. they were just enthralled with the whole yes. take the picture yeah, things, weren't they? Absolutely. She's been asking me if we've got them all out yet. And I told her yes, <laughs> finally. <laughs> it yeah. really is a wonderful thing, and you would be happy to see anybody come who would oh, like to come, wouldn't you? Yes. Not... Not to be bragging about it or anything, but just because it is such a special thing. Yeah. Yeah. So do you see yourselves getting 
to a point where you'll quit collecting? How many new ones did you add this year? That's what I'm trying to get at. Well, oh, haven't added very many this year yet. <laughs> I haven't been anywhere too much. The last ones I got were three that are downstairs, and uh, Haraldine lives in McGrath, and she was talking to me one evening. She said, Mother, they've got the cutest nativities in the drugstore. <laughs> so then Harold and I went to Lethbridge and we came home through McGrath to, to visit Haraldine. And as we came up the front street, I said, you got to stop at the drugstore. <laughs> I have to see the nativities. So I came home with three new nativities <laughs> from McGrath drugstore. <laughs> so we do just find them wherever. So you can see we, do, we don't have any more room for them either. It takes a lot of work to get them in and out. and Our legs and arms and everything is half worn <laughs> out. And, <laughs> well. and they've loved it. They've loved every year and every minute of it. And Thanks. finding those unique little nativities in the most unusual of places, because most people would say, you bought three in McGrath. How could there possibly have been anything in McGrath that you would buy to, to add to your collection? But it just goes to show. Yeah. Have to keep your eyes open, right? <laughs> and you'll see them everywhere. Anybody yeah. that's interested will find them. Yeah, they, they will. Know. They'll jump out at you. It's just been a really fun okay. thing. And you, I think if you had realized when you first started what it was going to turn into, you probably would have wished or dreamed in your heart that your kids and your grandkids would do exactly what they're doing, and that's collecting nativities. Yeah. Like, I think you've passed that <clears throat> on in a beautiful way, and I think, I know we all are. We yes. all are, and we all love it as much as you do, yeah. and we love coming out here and seeing them and enjoying them and enjoying your company and everything that goes along with it, and I just... I think it's the greatest thing, and I'm so proud and happy that you've you've done Thank this you and do. that you've kept doing it. And I hope you can do it for many years to come, no matter sure. how long it takes. I don't know why you well. take them down. You should just leave them up. <laughs> well, That's then, my theory. I know a lot of people say, well, just, just leave it. But then they become complacent. It's more exciting to get them out every year. And I think, oh, I forgot how cute that was, you know. But if they're left up, yes, I think it would become too complacent and and would just be something, yes, that you would just walk by. So that's that's why we put them away and bring them out every year. And so, it really does help bring the true spirit of Christmas, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, something like buying them all over again. Yeah. yeah. Yes. There's a new yep. one. Uh, buy it again and put it out. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> well, I think your quest has been great and something we can all look up to and emulate and try and be just like you and have such a good goal in our own lives would be absolutely phenomenal. And I it's wow. been wonderful to come out here and I hope you've I hope you've enjoyed it, Mom and Dad, and letting us come and, and then you'll have fun watching yourselves on T V. Think how much fun that'll be. We'll have to come to your house to do that. Oh, that's okay. We'll play cards because we don't get the we don't get the cards to channel out here. We'll we'll make sure you get a copy of it because you're going to want to watch it. Well, it's it's really special to have you do this. I didn't dream of such thing happening. Well, you deserve it, and you can smile oh. big for the camera and tell everybody goodbye. Okay. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy. Your holidays. Nativity finding. Yes, happy nativity <laughs> finding. We want to thank you for letting us come out to visit mom and dad and hope that you all enjoy seeing the nativities and hearing what they have to say. And once again, if you've just tuned in, this is Barb Nish and I'm with mom and dad, Mount, uh, Monty Nielsen and Harold Nielsen in Mountain View, viewing all of their nativities and what a sight it is to behold. Thank you for being with us. Yeah. It's been very special. Thanks for coming.